Hello and welcome everyone to today's webinar. Uh, for those of you just joining, we'll be going for uh, an hour maximum. Um, I'd like to uh, first point out if you have any technical issues you can't hear or uh, can't see, whatever, anything like that, uh, feel free to uh, ask a question and I will address that as soon as that comes up. Uh, but otherwise, during the presentation, if you have a question about any of the content for Juan or, or Haley, then feel free to type that in the question box as well, and we'll address those following the main presentation. Uh, so without further ado, I want to hand it to Annetta Stroud, who will be moderating today. Thank you, Mike, and greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Annetta Stroud, Associate Director for Content and Curriculum with ACRO, and um, we would like to welcome you to today's webinar presentation, When You Put Students First, Everyone Wins. Before we get started, we just want to reiterate on um, what Mike said quickly on logistics, as we will not be taking time for verbal questions. At any time through the presentation, just go ahead and use um, the questions function um, on the right hand of your webinar dashboard. At the end of the session, I will go ahead and present all of our questions to both Juan and Haley. So today's webinar, When You Put Students First, Everyone Wins, will highlight the novel way in which Texas A&M International University has leveraged the Civitas Learning's College Scheduler to optimize the registration process and promote student success. Joining us today, we have Haley Johnson, Account Executive with College Scheduler by Civitas Learning, as well as Juan Gilberto Garcia, Jr., Associate VP and University Registrar with Texas A&M International University. And with that, um, we would like to welcome both Haley and Juan to join us and share with us their success story. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Juan. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Juan Gilberto Garcia. I'm uh, the AVP of Student Success at Texas A&M International University. I'm also the university registrar. Uh, don't ask me how that happened. That's another presentation of its own. Uh, we are a university that is located in uh, Laredo, Texas. And uh, this year is actually our 50th anniversary as an institution of higher education. And uh, we've been an institution uh, that is part of the a and system for 25 years now. So for 25 years, we've been offering a uh, four-year degree. So we became um, a four-year institution in 1995. Um, back in 1995, obviously, a new campus, three buildings, you know, what do we do? So there was no enrollment to, to manage. So we decided to build enrollment at the university. That was the focus for the first uh, 10 years, you know, build a, a strong freshman class, build, you know, your transfer students, build an image, uh, build a, you know, have some sense of, of uh, belonging within the A&M system and also an identity of, of our own. So back by 2005, we were already around 4,000 students. So we already had an enrollment. But what we found was that our students were basically just coming to take classes and leaving. So for the next 10 years, we develop uh, our student life and we decide, okay, how do we make students to stay on campus and, and become more of your typical um, college campus across the nation where students eat on campus, they work on campus, they play on campus, they live on campus, and students are not only coming, parking, going to class, coming back, leaving campus, but actually spending their entire uh, you know, time here. So we took us 10 years to do that. And then after 2015, we said, okay, so what's, what's our next step? And we decided to engage in something that we were extremely afraid of doing, um, engaging with software, you know, engaging with companies and engaging in, in software uh implementation we had very bad experiences uh implementations that failed uh, we launched products that didn't give the results that we were expecting so the university was extremely extremely affair, uh, afraid of of engaging with 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 software and in, 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 in this sort of uh uh, uh interactions and, and, and agreements with, with whatever software you, 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 you can say. We, we, I was one of those that would go to all these 
conferences and now you know how you have the exhibit halls and i looked around and you know i didn't even get near the vendors because my my thing was why why even get near if we don't have the funding why even get near if we're not going to get it so you know for for many years i skipped the the all the sessions that were part of 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 of, of vendors and you know i just focus on best practices and things like that so but it wasn't until a time that said you know what we, we can't be doing the things that 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 we're doing uh we we cannot let our past experiences dictate our future and we need to engage in 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 this. We we need to uh, take advantage of 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 what the products are offering. And and companies got extremely um, they got extremely smart about this, and they started investing more on their IT and support departments. And many years, for those of you who have been involved in in, in this business, everybody will tell you, yes, this product talks to your uh, SIS, right? Everybody will say that it talks, it feeds information back and forward. But what they didn't tell you is how, you know. And, and they just uh, you went live, and they basically will give you a manual, and you know, good luck writing the scripts, and good luck connecting with the systems. And let's be honest, this regional universities like us, we don't have the army of IT and the expertise to develop scripts for for everything. So uh, companies started being very smart about this, and they basically are doing those those jobs for you. So back in 2013, we uh, we started exploring, and it was not until 2015 that we decided to engage with some companies, um, not specifically Civitas, and not specifically this product, but just by experience, we we engage with a company that allow us to do better room scheduling, and then we engage with companies that allow us to publish our catalog online and many other things. And it wasn't until around 2018 that the opportunity to partner with Civitas on, on, on a product came in. And uh, that's what we've been doing over this uh, past year. So we're about to finalize implementation on a lot of that. And now we're ready to begin using data. You know, data is one of those trendy words across higher ed. Uh, and that will be our focus uh, in, in the next uh, five years. So um, I forgot to mention our institution is 97% students of color, most of them Hispanic, Hispanics from Mexican uh, American descent, and 70% of our students are Pell recipients. So that gives you a little bit of perspective on, on why we needed a tool for advising so much. <clears throat> This is just a little bit of, of background information. In 2006, 15 years ago, we had 4,250 students. I'm rounding out the numbers. And this past fall, uh, uh, our enrollment was 8,500 students. So the population, the student population doubled in 15 years. And of course, our human resources didn't, didn't double. Uh, uh, we put priority on faculty, we put priority on facilities, we put priority in parking, we put priority in other things, and not necessarily adding an extra advisor to the advising office or to the office of, of, of the registrars or, and, and things like that. So with that, uh, obviously our course offerings increased. So we went from 915 sections in 2006. And the reason that I'm using 2006 is that that's the year that we went live with our current student information system, which is Banner. We're a Banner school, and that's the year in fall 2006 is when we went live with Banner. And if I compare that with the previous fall semester, where we offer 1,300 sections, we're talking about an increase of 42% of course offering in 15 years. If you manage advising, you know how this will create uh, problems for advisors. The amount of schedules that you can generate with with 1,300 sections obviously is way more than than when when uh, when we used to offer 915. So these place a burden on our advisors because of the complexity of, of, of the schedules that now we were generating online classes, hybrid classes, flip courses, flex term classes, so it just became uh, a nightmare just to do a, a simple schedule. Challenges on campus. So we doubled the population in 15 years. We increased by 42% the amount of classes offered. So these are some of the challenges. There were not 
a, a drastic change on the registration dynamics since we went live with Banner in 2006. Like I mentioned, our staff didn't grow at the same pace as our enrollment. Uh, and, and we just failed to adopt new technologies and students were already using iPads, they were using uh, mobile devices, everything was being done on their phone, but we were doing the same thing, registering students the same way that 15 years before. Uh, like I mentioned, the months of session offered and also the time of advising per session, which was an issue. Um, we, we, we were having more complex uh, schedules, we were having more students, and, went, and we just were not able to keep up with the demand of, of, of the students. And, 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 you know, let's be honest, the automatic is always, I need somebody else, I need more people, you know, we need more people to, to manage this. Um, and, and, and what we thought was, you know what, we don't need a somebody, we need a something. We need a something that works 24 seven. We need a something that, that doesn't take days off. We need something that doesn't require much training, something that doesn't get sick. We need something that can help both students and advisors. And, 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 and we need something that, that can also be mobile friendly. And that something was scheduler. Um, and and we, we decided to do this. How many of you, I'm pretty sure all of you have seen or have at least some version of the old pen and paper method? I mean, maybe even three years ago, I was still doing schedules this way. So let's face it, this, this is not efficient right now. Uh, this, is, this is something that, that uh, if you walk across campus three years ago, there were people still doing this and then were students still doing schedules this way. Uh, so we said, you know what, we, we need to make a change here. Uh, we, we need to do a substantial change in advising. The lines of the different offices were incredible. Uh, the day that we opened registration, we had students making lines in our offices since three or four in the morning, because even our own advisors would tell the students, hey, you need to be here at 3 a.m. If not, the schedule that I gave you is not going to be uh, good for, for 9 a.m. So it created a, a chaos around campus, and uh, we definitely needed something. So we explored different uh, different options, and 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 we saw... Uh, college scheduler and, and at a, a, a I believe it was a TACRO uh, conference here in, in, in Texas and uh, it seemed very simple to do, it seemed very intuitive. Uh, the people from Civita did a very good job on the presentation. I really don't remember who, I think it was Texas State uh, who, who was presenting with them and I said, you know what, this is something we, we had to have. This is something that we need and this is something that is going to change the way we do advising uh, on campus. Uh, and one of the things that I had to do uh, was coming back you know, to, to, to campus and try to sell this to our uh, leadership. Uh, and the first question they asked me is, you know, who has this? And I said, well, everybody except us, which was a lie, but you know, you know how they get all competitive, they started looking and into, into possible uh, funding sources for this. And, uh, you know, we were able to, to do this, you know, and I, I, I told them, I put it in perspective, you know, how much is it going to cost us to hire two new advisors with benefits? Let's face it, we don't pay enough. Uh, advisors are usually entry-level positions that perhaps start between thirty-two, dollars $35,000, at least here in Texas, plus benefits, you know, that, that, that requires an investment of about $45,000 you need two advisors, that's about $90,000. If, if you're gonna take time to, to, to hire, you're gonna uh, take time to post, you're gonna take time to go to all the paperwork and all the process with our HR offices, you're gonna take time to train them. And if, if you are at least something similar than us, the turnover of advisors is extremely high. So at the moment that we told them about the investment on, on, on this product, the, 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 the possible return of investment, uh, it was a no-brainer. So we, we signed with the company uh, late 2017, and we went to through only two months of implementation. The holidays got on the way. We were able to do some work in December, and then we work uh, January and the first two weeks of February, and we went live before registration for summer and fall of 2018.
So benefits for advising, uh, our typical advising session, about 30 minutes, it can be more, it can be less, but it was turning into a, a 25 minute scheduling session and only a five minute advising session. And after we went live with, with scheduler, it just flipped. You know, it went from five minute scheduling because the system was doing the thinking for you. Based, you know, you put there, uh, the students were able to put breaks there, work schedules, practices. If they didn't want classes in the morning, they don't want classes in the afternoon. If they don't want classes on, on, on Fridays, all that logic and all that thinking is done by the scheduler. It's not done by an advisor. Long are the days where uh, our advisors click back and forward to see if classes were open or not, if they put students on the wait list. And, and, and because of the complexity of our schedule, our advisors were taking a long time making the schedule. and They were forgetting about the, the human side of, of advising. Uh, advising became more of an, a transactional thing rather than a, that, that, that the fo we forgot to focus on the human touch of advising. Um, after we went live with, with the TAMU scheduler, uh, our advisors were able to reconnect with our students and that automatically improved their, their, their experiences during the advising sessions. Uh, we need more time, our advisors need more time to focus on, on, on the actual advising, not the scheduling. And the, the, this system is not going to know whether the student is having a hard time with their family, whether the student is having a a difficult time with their work schedule, uh, whether they're having financial situations, whether they have some sort of medical issues. This thing, the scheduler doesn't know that. That, inf that is information that is not found in the student information system. That is information that can be uh, obtained from the human interaction. So by allowing our advisors to spend 25 minutes uh instead of five minutes on this you know it allowed them to reconnect with the student and obviously the student was uh extremely happy with with our advising uh sessions and uh the picture on your right uh, on on the slide is that's not our campus that is actually uh, a high school a local high school um so we also use the scheduler for recruiting purposes we have uh, something called on-site registration, where during the month of April and May, we go to regional and, 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 and local high schools. And for those students that commit, those, those students that, that want to register already for the summer or fall semester at the university, we actually go and do, we do registration drives in, in, in the local and regional campuses. Uh, it, this has been for the last 15 years since we invested in, in, in recruiting uh, this is something that went live, this event called on -site registration went live. We, we went live with it in 2001, and we've been doing it ever since. The demand, of course, has grown. Back then in 2001, our freshman class was 400. Right now, our freshman class is 1,350 students. And we were extremely close to postponing this, these events, uh, which it, they are very unique. Um, there is very human intensive, but it has given us a lot of results. Actually, between 75 and 80% of our first time freshmen registered during one of these events. And, and because of the high demand and, and, and the amount of advisors, uh, we were not able to, um, to, to keep up with this, with, with these sort of events. It was hard for us, uh, to keep up with the demands and there were students that were not even served during their session. So uh, scheduler came in and, and basically saved our on-site registration and, and we have been able to do wonders with it. And you see different pictures of, of advisors doing schedules and, and the time you scheduler being used at local high schools, uh, which again, we were able to continue and we were able to sustain uh, at least, you know, for, for the last two years. And, 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 and right now we're just, uh, trying to use scheduler in a better way to also, you know, keep up with the demand of 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 of, of registration sessions in in these different events. So just a uh, just a quick glance at the impact of of uh, scheduler at at the university. Um, it helps students schedule, make a schedule around their lives in an easier, friendlier way. Um, like I mentioned, allow our advisors to connect with students. 
and and the fact that students are are able to find more classes uh you know schedule is able to build a schedule that maybe not even the student or the advisor was able to generate uh because of the different sections because of the amount of time that they had to do uh during the amount of time that they spend and that they had an ex student already to see so they maybe maybe the advising session was rushed so with this the students are able to see all based on their wants and needs all of the different uh possibilities of schedules that that they can do um the return on investment was great just in the first year we we saw an increase of 0.43 percent in credit hours you might say well it's not even one credit no but when you compare when you multiply that by by 8,000 students, you know it 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 it, it adds, up, adds up to uh, a good amount. So our return on investment just the first semester, uh, we're estimating that it was to, about 2,000 uh, uh, dollars in just uh, one semester. Um, the product was well uh, received by our students and advisors. Um, just the first three weeks, about 4,000 students um, started using the product. And by the end of the first semester of the registration season, 90% of our students, so the total enrolled students actually use, use the product. So uh, it was well invested, it was well adapted, and, and I cannot tell you uh, how, how happy our students and advisors were uh, just after the first year of uh, first semester of implementation. Um, we added then uh, last year the uh, an add-on that this product has where they're, they do all transactions within scheduler. They don't have to, before they used to build the schedule and, and we send that schedule to self-service banner um, to the portal where they will register. Now Civitas created a um, platform where they can do all the transactions, even the registration within the same product. So we made a hard decision to remove all channels from the previous system and just force everybody um, to use scheduler. And nobody complained, nobody called us. You know, we, we were very strategic on where to place and how to place the links and look at the, the amount of registration um, events that we had during when we opened registration, almost 10,000 registration in, in one day. Did our students liked it? Um, they loved it. This is a this is a tweet that came up um, right away during the first few hours that we went live. Tommy, you came up with this new lead way of generating schedules for us uh, instead of us making it. This should have been done a long time ago, which I completely agree with the students and people around campus also, you know, completely agree with 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 this student's tweet. So what's now, what's next? Um, I think for us, for also not only at the university, at TAMIU, but also for in higher education, we, for years, we spent time looking for the reasons and, and, and the circumstances and the whys of why our students were failing. Uh, and, and we never thought about the reasons why we were the ones failing our students. Um, if there are communications between departments or between colleges, if the student services don't talk to the to the academic area, if, if we if we build a course schedule based on the wants of the faculty and not the needs of the students, uh, if we don't offer the right classes with the right capacities, um, if if we if we take hours to do a simple schedule. And, and, and if we have gone through years of making decisions without actual data, all those are reasons of, of how we are failing our students. And, 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 and us in higher ed, some of these things are easy to fix. Some of these things require a little bit more intervention from leadership and, and, and substantial changes of perhaps organizational culture. But these are reasons why we are affecting the success of our students and why we are affecting uh, whether they're successful or not, whether they graduate in four years or not, whether we keep them after just one semester or not. And, and these are things that, that we need to work. So uh, we need to start connecting our systems, our people, and our processes and, 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 and remove barriers that we create ourselves. Uh, I always ask around and, and, and I, I tell uh, 
you know, folks, you know, look at your catalog and, and look at the undergraduate requirements and look at the policies. Nobody knows when, why half of those things are there. Nobody knows who created them. And, and they might be outdated for the current stage of higher education. So um, this platform also, this product also allows us to anticipate the students' needs because as they're building their schedules, you can generate reports to see uh, a demand of a particular class. And if in the schedule you have only one section for 100 students and you can anticipate that 200 students actually want this class, you know, you can talk to the academic department and say, hey, you know, there's a, a, an over demand of this class. Do we increase the capacity or you want to open a, a, another section, which allows us to build better schedules. And, and but we, by having better schedules, we allow students to improve the trajectory and improve our graduation and retention rates. Uh, and at the end, you know, like I've been mentioning, we need to make use of data to make wise and informative decisions uh, that at the end of the day, the people that, that benefit from this are, are our students. Um, that's all I have. Uh, Haley uh, from Civitas, I don't know if there's something you want to add. Uh, and for our folks from ACRO, I will, um, be uh, available for questions. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Juan. That was, um, it, thank you so much for sharing your success story um, with um, using College Scheduler. We do actually have a couple of questions that we'd like to get right to. And I will just go ahead and pose the questions to both Juan and Haley. And I will just read them as they came in. So the first question, one, what was your rollout campaign to get 90% of students to use your new scheduling tool? We did, um, with the help of Civitas, they allow us to create videos um, and they allowed us to, uh, we create our own logo. You know, we put our, they allow us to put our own name to the product. And during the month of February and, and the month of March, March, I see it as advising season. You know, you, we roll the schedule and 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 students are are building you know they're 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 talking to other students to see who's the right professor and they're they're looking at different combinations of things that they can do during these two months we we did a a heavy uh campaign in social media we created uh, kind of like in the movies you know that I, the movie is is not going to come up like in, in in a year but they give you a teaser you know of, of what's coming or the you know six months after they give you a, a the, an actual preview you know that's something that we did you know we we put posters around campus uh we put it in our monitors you know the screen savers of, of the computer labs um we put it like i said in the different avenues of social media and just flyers all the way all, all across campus um we also remove the old links so we moved the old way of students and we didn't change the names. We just revamp it and, and kind of make it easier for students. And we basically funnel everybody to use it. Uh, and believe me, nobody said, why are we doing it this way? Nobody did that. You know, maybe uh, there were some students that were having, that were questioning, you know, is, is this really the way you register now? But, but you know, aside from that, it was well adopted and, and, and we basically removed the old links and we said, well, let's leave it behind the scenes. If, if there's a revolution and students really want the old way of doing this, you know, we can put it there in the portal, but not as the, the main page, but that didn't happen. And uh, no, no, no issues from students or from advisors. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, so our next question, um, and Juan, I believe that this will also be directed to you. So do you find that extracting data from College Scheduler actually is easy and helpful, and why is it helpful, and what decisions have you made based on the data that has been pulled? Yeah, uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on that one. So we, you know, the departments develop their schedules based on on what they offer the previous semester. They they they, they see the, the enrollment and the capacity that they had in every class. So uh, whenever you open scheduler, whenever students are building their schedules, uh, the information is stored in 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 in, in the Civitas platform, where you'll be able to download the information and see the demand of a particular class. Uh, and let's say that, you know, criminal justice 4390 um, has a capacity of, of, of 100 students, 
you can download a report and check, you know, what is the demand of that particular class, the immediate demand of students actually saying, I'm going to take the class. It's already on my schedule or is my ready on the prospective schedule. It, the, the schedules are stored in something called shopping cart, you know, so they store there kind of like whenever you, you buy in Amazon or Macy's or whatever you, you store your items there. So in this way, they store your schedule in the shopping cart. So there's a report that extracts information from the shopping cart and, 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 and we can tell the department folks, you know, we have, uh, I know that you have a section of, of 100, but you know, there's already 200 students that are saying that they want to take that class. That doesn't mean that they're going to take it, but at least you know what you can predict or expect that what sort of demand that class is going to have. So then the departments can be ready to make a decision of whether to increase the capacity of that class or to add another section uh, to the schedule uh, even before registration starts. Okay, excellent. Um, so a couple of things in general. So do you also at Tamil, do you guys do wait listing as well? We do. And there's also, that, that's one of the filters that you can put in the scheduler. You can tell the, the, the scheduler, look for closed classes, look for wait list classes, or look for only open classes or look for all. So students can actually filter that out. Um, they might be looking for a class or they might be looking for a particular professor that is already full and, and it will not appear if they decided to filter out classes that are closed. Uh, we do wait listing and, and, and they can also use scheduler to, to be placed on, on the wait list. So yes, that, that is a, 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 an option. There's a, a capacity that, that scheduler can do for you. That's excellent. And to follow up as well, um, does it integrate with DegreeWorks? It does. We haven't done that yet, but but Civitas is, has has been developing different ways of 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 integrating with the planner. We we haven't done that because we don't have planners in DegreeWorks yet. Uh, we already have the pathways, but they're not built into into DegreeWorks. So it does integrate with DegreeWorks. Uh, I'm afraid they will probably have to find another client that has done that, uh, and I'll probably be joining that session. But uh, I have we, we have not done that just because uh, our our degree works is pretty basic. It's kind of like the degree audit and that's it. You know the what if scenarios and those sort of things. Uh, but but yes, yeah, CVTES is working on 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 on, on a better integration with degree works. It's already integrated. I really don't know at what point. Maybe they will be able to answer that question. But uh, we have not. We don't have that live yet. Obviously, at the moment that the student registers through the scheduler. You can rerun an audit, and it'll automatically pick those classes that the student already registered in degree works. But uh, the level of integration, I'll, I'll have to defer to our folks from Civitas, or perhaps even, you know, another uh, um, institution. Excellent. Hey, yeah, did you want to jump in? Yeah, no problem. Um, yes, uh, College Scheduler integrates with degree works. Um, we're able to pull in the ed plans. Uh, that the student has planned out and right on the home screen when they um, come into College Scheduler, it alerts them that they have courses planned out um, in this term and they click, uh, they do a one-click degree plan import. So all those courses just populate right on the home screen and then they can add their breaks and generate schedules and register uh, very seamlessly. And this helps, um, this helps students stay on track taking those courses that they have planned out. Uh, we also have nudges within College Scheduler. So if students are planning courses outside of their degree plan, we, we can alert them of that to help them stay on track and take classes that are only within uh, their degree plan. That's excellent. And um, one, of, um, one of the last questions that we have today is going to be about the cost of implementation. And I know this can be a little bit of a touchy subject, but Juan and, H and Haley, if you could share um, some cost information about implementation, that would be great. Yeah, I'm happy to um, discuss that. It's actually, it's based on uh, the total student uh, headcount at the institution. It also depends on what uh, student information system you're on. 
Uh, so we integrate with PeopleSoft, Banner, Colleague, Homegrown systems out there. So the implementation uh, fee is a little bit different uh, per um, SIS. Um, and then let's see what else. Also, like if you've been an existing college scheduler customer and you're adding their new registration functionality, um, there's also the, the additional cost uh, for the new registration functionality um, is different than if you were a new customer and so forth. So um, we're happy to um, share the pricing with you. Um, the information on the screen, if you wanna email my colleague, uh, Cassandra McKay, at civitaslearning.com. Um, if you're interested in a personal demo, we're always happy to um, schedule that and share uh, with other institutions and their teams and see if it's something that uh, would be a good fit. Excellent, Haley. That's really that's really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it seems that we do not have any more questions. So what we would like to do is just go ahead and give you guys one more minute to go ahead and type up any follow-up questions that you may have today for our panelists. So again, we'll just go ahead and give you guys another minute or so to post your questions. Let me, I would like to invite everybody that is attending ACRO. Um, well, Civitas will be hosting a session and I'll be one of the panelists and I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody uh, about the, the project, about the implementation, about the outcomes. Um, I can stay, just, just let me know that you were part of, of, of this webinar so that way I know what I said already and come, come ready with the questions. I would love to, to, to share my experience because this, you know, I, I feel for, for my colleagues out there that don't have something like this because it, it, it really uh, made a, a, a drastic change in, in the university. And, and if you're able to get something like this and you are the project leaders or you're the one that pushed for this, be, believe me, you're going to be you're going to be the hero on campus. And so I'll, I'll, I'll love to to share any sort of tips or any sort of questions that they will have. Uh, we'll be there uh, on on. On Agro, uh, I believe our presentation is always right there. Monday, April 6th so will be one of the morning sessions. Excellent one. Thank you for the friendly reminder. And, and we do have another question coming in, and we have a couple actually. So the first one, the first one for Juan will be: So, what other administrative tools are you currently using within the program? Are you pre-populating student carts? And how successful are the other tools in your experience? We we're not pre-populating schedules. The what we are doing, uh, one of the other tools that we're doing is the the placement of learning communities which is something that all of our uh, first time freshman students go into so that is one that we are that we're using so basically at the moment that they use the or that they use this feature if there's a learning community with four classes already they just need to look for other two um, this is actually something that we use at our on-site registrations and, and and that is one of the reasons why we were able to to keep those events because uh, at the moment the student is able to identify a learning community which are usually driven by 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 majors and by academic not academic standards, sorry uh, by majors by classification you know um it is it becomes even easier to to do a schedule so that's the one that we are using heavily at, at tamu excellent so it does appear that we may not have any more questions, but again, we'll just go ahead and give everyone one more second or so. And in the meantime, we just want to thank you everyone for your participation in today's webinar. And we do hope that we'll see you at some of our upcoming ACRO events, especially as Juan mentioned at our ACRO annual meeting this year in New Orleans from April 5th through the 8th. And as Juan mentioned, his session on the panel will be April 6th in the morning at 10 o'clock to 1045. And all of the details for that panel session can be found online um, at our ACRO annual meeting website. And as I don't see any more, oh yes, go ahead, Haley. Um, I, there was a question, if somebody wanted to uh, listen to this recording of the webinar, um, will it be archived on the ACRO website? Absolutely, Haley, thanks. That's a really good question. Yes, the webinar will be archived on the ACRO website under 
webinars and archi all archived webinars. So if you have colleagues that you'd like to go ahead and share this information with who are not able to join us today, please feel free to go ahead and share with them the recording through the archive and the recording should be up there in, a, in another day or so. And with that, I would just like to thank both um, both our panelists, Haley and Juan, for taking the time today to um, talk with us about the success that they have been able to have at TAMU with the implementation of the College Scheduler by Civitas. And with that, thank you all so very much, and we look forward to seeing you again at another ACRO event. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody.